one of them is the radio control. In the data, they can access the maintenance transformation marker in the marker in the only after maintenance in the They will not be set up in the volume system or in case of reversal change. So, the level of the application identifies one marker in each
like microblogging or scale microblogging? Good afternoon, Mr. Director, sir, students, and the ladies and dear students. So, uh, today I'll be my talk on stomach cancer. I'll uh, be giving a talk on tension and cardiac diagnosis. So, uh, I've divided uh, my topic into problem subheading, that is stomach cancer burden, risk factor prevention, primary prevention, early detection, and benefit of early detection. So, uh, whenever we uh, talk about the cancer burden, we refer to this local data. It is an uh, online database of IERC, as it is International Association of uh, Research on Cancer. So, according to uh, this report of 2020, uh, stomach cancer is the fifth uh, most common cancer worldwide and fourth leading cause of cancer death. And it is most common cancer in four countries, that is Bhutan. Pakistan, Cape Verde, Pakistan, and two out of all cases and 65% of all that occur in men, and highest incidence is found in Japan. This is a global map of stomach uh, cancer incidence in Europe, and both men and female, and the mortality in red. So you can see the uh, this, this area. It's a very dark color, blue color area, and this dark maroon color area in Asia. They have the highest incidence of cancer, stomach cancer in the world, as well as mortality. Followed by uh, South American countries and uh, the rest of the world. So, again, this is uh, age generalized incidence and mortality in Poland population, of only five highest incidence uh, countries of this cancer. So Japan has the highest incidence in May, followed by Mongolia. And among female, Mongolia is the highest incidence, followed by Nazikistan, Republic of Korea, and Japan again. So uh, I want to uh, increase uh, the of this great part of this state of mortality. So you can see that uh, Japan and Korea, although the incidence is very high, but mortality is very low, as compared to other countries. Coming to East Asia, uh, it comprises 60% of all cases, 56.6% of all deaths, of which China has achieved 49% of all cases and 48.6% of all deaths um, during its uh, population. Again, as mentioned, I have been in Japan, Mongolia, and Korea. Mortality and incidence ratio very low in the SDI uh, country, uh, it needs to be very high. Uh, it is uh, 0.9, it is 9 out of 10 in the present. Some of the cases will uh, die. 
while in Japan it's 0.3 and 0.2. And this report published in less than 2020, uh, this was a the population based modeling study. You have seen that in 2020, incidence of obesity as well was estimated to be 1.1 million cases worldwide, and mortality at 7.7 lakhs. And it is expected by uh, 2020 million uh, cases and mortality will cross 1 million. Near home, uh, this is the report of NCRP, that is National Cancer Registry Program by NCDIR Bangalore. This uh, blue dark blue color represents a uh, long distance space like to this rest of India. So you can see that top 10 is occupied by long distance space. So even in this highest uh, incidence of stomach cancer in May, found in Azo district, followed by Bafari district. And among female, Bafari district, top service, followed by Azo district. And this is the report of Arnachal, West Arnachal, PVCR, that is uh, present here in June itself. So, according to this report, which is again published in the CRP, so uh, among men, one in every 32 men and one in every uh, 62 female will develop stomach cancer in their lifetime. Similarly, in PVCR of Asiba, among one in every 33 men and one in every 73 women will develop stomach cancer in their lifetime. So, coming to risk factor. So, whenever we talk about risk factor, we have to divide it into non modifiable and modifiable. Non modifiable, obviously, as age progresses, incidence of cancer will rise, and family history, genetic disease, and age to drop or uh, some polymorphism. And among modifiable risk, it's primarily focused on risk, and then dietary factors like salted uh, salted food, processed red meat, small food, alcohol, tobacco, etc. And lifestyle diseases like obesity or high BMI can also uh, increase the risk. And if we divide according to topography, can divide it into non cardia which comprises most cases, and cardio, which comprises 80% of all cases. What, uh, what of these have probably been stated that is consumption of food preserved by smoking, smoke food, heavy alcohol or smoking, and this thing is stated in non cardia, 90% of cases is attributed to this. And among cardia, it is mostly obesity, diabetes, and lifestyle diseases. So when we talk about we, uh, our purpose is to modify the modifiable risk factor and understand the non modifiable risk factor. So, H5 again, which is the most common cause in uh, non cardia, it was a uh, non negative bacteria which was discovered in 1922 by Danny Parson and Bobby Warren um, with a cause of peptic ulcer, for which they received the Nobel Prize in 2005. Now it is uh, classified as plasma 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 So uh, the specialty of this uh, bacteria is that it has a UVS uh, in general it's limited. So uh, with the help of which it can, it can convert um, urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. And carbon dioxide is said and ammonia it forms a alkaline coating around this urea. As this bacteria, due to which it can not only survive, but it can thrive in this hostile environment of town. So it can very well traverse through this gastric uh, juice, the uh, acidic juice, then through the mucus, it get attached to this epithelium and uh, release this protein called K A and black A, disrupt the tight junction of the cells. Post inflammation, apoptosis, ultimately ulcer. So, this is the major cause of acute encoding gastritis, peptic ulceration, gastric adenocarcinoma, and kind of lymphoma hormone uh, that is mucosa isolated. Uh, this report was published in 2017. Uh, in, it is estimated that only 
this report in 2015, and it was 94.4 million individuals worldwide uh, is going to be punished by the way. And the lowest report, the lowest prevalence we see in the children is 18.9%, but still, they also account for 1.6 billion individuals in that particular country. So this is uh, a map of uh, its primary prevalence worldwide. Red is for uh, those countries where data is either reviewed or not um, present. And this dark maroon color where prevalence is more than 50%. And uh, the lighter color is accordingly with 9% or with 9% less so we can again see highest incidence we see in Asian countries and some Asian European countries, followed by Latin American countries and African countries. But again, uh, cancer prevalence is not reported so much in African countries, by because of they of uh, proper data or maybe because of the other reasons we discuss about that. So we can see that these two men are kind of comparable, you know, I think. They are quite comparable. So, if 50% of the world population is infected with H. pylori, why only small percentage of the breast cancer? Many uh, studies try to explain it. One of them was genetic variation in H. pylori itself. So, there was interesting the type of H. pylori from different human population. Two most common motive. Type 1 was in Hispania, Native Peruvian, Guatemala, they know. Also in many Africa in the US recession. Type 2 was written to dominate seen in Japan and China. And type 3 was isolated from Calcutta in India. Again, salt intake was associated with uh, the laboratory. As far as infection and dietary factor seems to be synergistically uh, for gastric cancer. So many studies uh, studies. Uh, so the association of high salt intake on gastric cancer, some have studied the intake and, uh, based on consumption and by uh, questionnaire, some on urinary output, urinary output. and uh, in this study by Lancet, it was seen by that age, uh, this uh, high salt intake seemed to promote the port as well as may change the gene expression of H5. And it also seemed to uplink that. Which we have seen uh, was destruction of the uh, epithelium. Again, this was studied by our public health. Uh, factors, uh, where are the soil? So, it's so the map of world according to the soil consumption overall. So, again, the high color that is maroon color, these countries, they consume. 15 grams of more salt and this yellow color uh, actually, I yellow color they can choose more than 9 grams uh, green color more than 7 grams and um, blue color 5 grams or less so we can see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, one more thing WHO so recommend uh, consumption of 5 grams or less so per day so if you see that none of the countries except for few technical countries consume just less salt. So you have to live in Africa to follow the future guidelines. So again, uh, we can just interpret from it why this uh, summer cancer is high in this region and maybe we can explain why it is low in this. <coughs> this is just a uh, simplified picture for just better understanding to make a picture in our mind. Anything fresh, fresh vegetable, it is the salt standing is negligible. And dairy products and the normal breakfast that we take, which has um, some amount of salt, and highest is present in processed meat, fast food, etc. And what about red meat and processed food, uh, meat? That many of us have that it should uh, less gastric acid. So there have been many analysis uh, studies, but 
and there is meta analytics was published in 2013, which saw that there is a significant association of bad meat and processed food uh, with gastric cancer. And this was studied by um, UICC, that is the uh, International Union uh, of International Cancer Control. So, uh, the uh, project was top project, that is, summer cancer cooling project, which included 22 studies. So 11,000 cases, 20,000 control. So they see that although there is associated, uh, association of stomach cancer with all kinds of meat consumption, but it was most significant with the consumption of red meat and processed meat and total meat consumption. And uh, this uh, relation becomes highest as we take uh, anything more than 153, uh, sorry, 150 ground of the red meat per day. And there is been uh, some study which showed the association of saturated fat with isopated and a and excess amount of cancer. So coming to Northeast India, this is the common food habit of Northeast India. Fermented food, roasted food, spices, red meat, and smoking and alcohol intake is highest in our uh, as compared to the rest of the country. Uh, there is not many studies, but one significant and very interesting study I found is by uh, this group one at all, which was published in 2006 in the Journal of Gastroenterology. Uh, so he studied the uh, association of dietary habit and stomach cancer in Mizoram. Uh, he uh, particularly said this one he commented for pet for so long we have traditionally uh, prepared in uh, Mizoram. So it is said that with frequent consumption of sour own dried salted meat, a small rice of the meat, fish, and soda and the like. Commonly used in all location regions for uh, uh, food additive. So there is a strong association with this food intake. And interestingly, he has found that H. pylori infection was not independently associated with, uh, it's not independent risk factor of stomach cancer. However, if H. pylori infection interacts with consumption of salt or smoke variety, it shows a significant association. Uh, similarly, as I talked about long uh, polymorphism, I won't go into detail of that, but this study uh, again is very interesting. Uh, it studied the effect of P53 polymorphism with dietary and tobacco related uh, reduced in stomach cancer. So, in this study, it is also found that this polymorphism, the aggressive portion of pro pro genotype, which seem to increase risk of stomach cancer. In many studies, even uh, in some um, South China, also in some uh, Japan, also I think. So, but it is also so that this phenotype seem to increase the risk of stomach cancer in female and in older uh, people of all gender, but not in male. And in smoker, both in um, male. I mean, female as well as uh, elderly person and upper population, it seems to increase the risk uh, as compared to non smoker. Uh, so, again, in this uh, study, more fried fish and preserved meat increase the risk than non consumer. Uh, some study also some risk uh, association of EMR, high EMR, and risk of gastric cancer, and also uh, metabolic. Uh, Obesity seem to cause uh, impact on this gastric uh, cancer. So uh, now uh, we we'll talk about risk factor. What about other dietary habits? How can we decrease the uh, risk? So this uh, study, this was a full analysis of cosmetic study in China, Japan, and Korea, which included some 810 more cardiac gastric cancer and uh, 1,000 uh, plus um, control. So it has shown that there is uh, increasing food intake can associated with decreasing non-cardiac uh, gastric cancer. 
However, there are some associations for you can say that they also, but uh, they didn't find any significant difference in them. So, uh, some study also showed that the uh, vitamin D3 has a special uh, effect or uh, can decrease the risk of gastric and cancer in this vitamin. And vitamin C and vitamin C have a protective effect. So, now coming to uh, Detection, uh, early detection of stomach cancer. Early detection is done by screening. The screening can be passive or opportunistic. That is, the symptomatic patient, the one who presents to us with some kind of symptom, and active, that is, in high risk population, uh, and asymptomatic patient, I mean, person or patient. So, the purpose of screening is negative prevention, that is, uh, that is early detection of cancer and to create awareness. So, whoever wants to contact with now, uh, this patient who had peptic uh, ulcer or ectopic gastritis, they should try to get, uh, create awareness. So, in the secondary prevention, we try to catch patient early, in early stage, that is in the D1, A, D1, A, B, O. T1 and T2 uh, impossible. So T1, uh, in this picture, it is, I also saw that T1 uh, is something that is limited to mucosa or the minor proteia. T2 is extended to the proteia. Anything more than that is advanced disease. We follow HSCC, that is American Joint Committee on Cancer, uh, who uh, periodically introduce uh, this. Any system. So, thinking uh, not only include the tumor size, it also, also has to include lymph node status and standard status. So, stage one is T1 or T2, no lymph node, right? And anything more than that is advanced disease. So, uh, why staging? Why do you want to catch early? So, uh, the importance you can see with this high risk survival rate. Of stomach cancer after surgery. This was my uh, NCI, post year cytomic any surveillance, epidemic, uh, epidemiology, and individual database. So, in stage one, survival is more than 50%. 1A is 71%, 1B is 57%, and after that, it is less than 50%. Now, this uh, report is of uh, 2015 16. Then I am uh, even in America getting to do aggressive E2 recession, E2 recession. Mm -hmm. We expect that survival will be better than it is now. And with the addition of chemo therapy, obviously, it will be better. So, uh, does screening improve survival or is it most effective? There's only two countries which does cancer screening, there's nothing stomach cancer screening program. That is in Korea, since 2002. And in Japan since 1983, but they earlier they used vitamin X ray. And then in 2014, uh, guideline was uh, updated. And now they periodically use endoscopy for screening. So there's been sick in diagnosis and improvement in survival plus 50%. It's very significant. And endoscopy obviously is 4.6 times more sensitive than X ray. It's quite a bit. So it is in, uh, it has reduced mortality by 57 to 67 percent. So this is the data from uh, uh, this, uh, screening program in Japan. So this is uh, run for mortality and this is for incidence. Mortality you can see it is steadily decreasing, and this is for individual 40 years and younger. Actually, this is 40 years, years. This is for 13, uh, 30 to 39 years. This is the orange one. This is below that. So, uh, you can see there is a steady uh, decline in mortality. And in case of incidence, there was a peak in 1985 to 1990. What was the reason? This was because screening program was started at that time. Obviously, the case is closed. After that, there was a steep fall in incidence. Now, they have stopped screening for 20 years or less. 
It was fitting for India. So again, in this meta analysis and systemic review, we will then study uh, of the three lens classification. We see that there is forty percent reduction in gastric cancer mortality with the use of screening. Now, how many of us would like to do two endoscopy and many? Obviously, no many. Stay and please. One like to do it again. So, this is a hope with this capsule endoscopy. That is uh, endoscopy done with the use of this small uh, vitamin uh, capsule size camera, which is uh, incorporated with color video camera. And it like that the transmitter. This is made to work uh, where it is around this waist, and this is the recorder. It swallows the capsule, it goes through the entire the x ray. It's very comfortable. It can even visualize small intensity. It is not visualized with the uh, endoscopy or endoscopy. But the problem is the cost. The cost is quite high, it is around 20 or 25,000. Oh, the population cannot be used. Okay, it cannot be used in general population. Image processing takes time. In traditional endoscopy, we get the body immediately. But here, the image has to be processed. It has to be taken out from the before and it has to be processed. Again, cannot, the result cannot be given immediately. Not good for screening. Uh, this is a simplified low chart. Uh, given by ESMO, that is European Institute of Medical Oncology. So, according to it, in basic adenocarcinoma, if the stage is stage one, uh, surgery is enough. Some can, uh, can be dealt with endoscopy resection or limited surgery. Anything more than that, survival improves with use of chemotherapy, surgery, then again, chemotherapy needs to be. And to improve survival. I won't go into the parameter of the process. Uh, surgery into gastrectomy, partial subcortical or total, last name telemetry, endoscopy because our endoscopy resection has been a little bit later. Laparoscopic or robotic surgery has been adapted wherever it is available. So, Passive gastrectomy is done for small uh, distal or anterior gastric cancer, where the distal part of the uh, stomach is removed, followed by the drop into the gastrectomy. And uh, total gastrectomy, where entire stomach is removed, which is an approximate stomach cancer, large distal gastric cancer, followed by books and white, is of failed gastrectomy. D2 lymphadenectomy is quite expensive. You can listen to the time to get uh, accepted, although it has been followed for a long time in uh, Japan and Korea. So, in, in here, the N1 lymphoid is actually is done, that is, penetration lymphoid plus uh, regional lymphoid, that is, N2 lymphoid, that is, branches, uh, lymphoid around, around the branches of celiac axis. It is quite popular, but now it is accepted worldwide, even here, uh, certain as well. Coming to endoscopy dissection, uh, the study is very limited. Not many countries are able to practice. Uh, Only in Japan and Korea, where screening is used to detect early disease, they are using it. It is done in P1A, less than 2 cm, well moderately uh, different cm tumor. And those that have not invaded me from uh, some mucosa and DI in this lymphovascular invasion or lymphoma metastasis is not seen. And clear lateral entry margin can be taken. Only those cases it can be done. So different techniques are used. Uh, uh, for infection and share technique where some saline is injected to some mucosa to elevate this uh, lesion. That's then it can be used to the safety. Yeah, and then the double scale technique is just pulled up and then resected. Then some uh, stereotypy can be used. Uh, it's not, this could be resection is a very good result in those related cases. 
84 percent in five years, 64 percent in ten years. Better than the result in vaccine earlier. And in some studies, uh, in some people because of the section, they have seen that uh, it also uh, the three year survival is 98 percent. And uh, is uh, uh, is uh, uh, it's higher than AMR that is. And also the great dose of research, that is 93 percent. It takes time here to develop this result. Now we are following that uh, Esmo guideline for most of the advanced treatment. For most of the advanced treatment. So chemotherapy uh, is given uh, in adjuvant treatment. Where we use, sorry, uh, new adjuvant and adjuvant treatment. We use a combination of multiple chemotherapy, uh, chemotherapy agents. Which include platinum, pilot q textol, hydrotrican, plasticine, etc. So our purpose in neo uh, chemotherapy that is pre-operative setting is to decrease the size of tumor to make it operable and stop early metastasis. And in adjuvant setting, the purpose is to give the residual microscopic cancer cell and reduce the risk of metastasis. Radiotherapy has very limited products to help. So my take message is the stomach cancer can be successfully treated with very good survival. Thank you. Thank you very much for the program.